Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you. Good to see you uh, back again. And uh, we are ready to study God's Word. I told Mark that I hope we aren't uh, going to be going over the same material. Uh, I know he was <coughs> uh, talking about some of the same things. We didn't compare notes. So if, we, if we're saying the same thing, it's because we are teaching the same thing. And that's exactly what the Bible says we're to do, is it not? First Corinthians 1 verse 10, let us all speak the same thing, mind the same things. Well, we didn't compare notes, and so we, uh, we may overlap the, uh, uh, some of the same issues, but that'll be fine. Uh, we want to give you our content information. Here's how you can reach me, 276-340-2653, or you can reach me at wordmylord at gmail.com. And, of course, you uh, saw our, our worship times and assembly times on the promos uh, coming on before us. We meet at uh, 10, uh, 9 o'clock for Bible study on Sunday mornings, 10 o'clock for worship, um, Thursday evenings at, uh, <clears throat> at uh, 7 p.m. Of course, if you're in Martinsville or Danville area, we want you to uh, uh, visit with those brethren there, 120 American Legion in Danville and uh, 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville. So hope that you will do that very thing. Uh, tonight, we're going to be discussing, as uh, I think Martin might use one of these callers, uh, the gentleman that called in a couple weeks ago, and uh, he was talking about how unloving we were. And so I want to just play uh, uh, a, a clip for you and let you listen to that again, and then we'll, we'll go from there. You're on live. Yes, uh, I've sent him. I've, I've listened to your conversation and uh, what you're preaching. But it seems like to me you're preaching more division than love. The Bible's supposed to be about love and bringing people together and trusting one another. Well, but can, what you're saying, to me, you, you sound like you, you're preaching division. Can I get you, can, I get, can you see your TV screen, sir? Yes, I see the TV screen. Can you read that first paragraph? And I, I, I see that, uh, I mean, what I'm saying is that the Bible's about love. Okay, can you read not, Can you read John chapter 14, I verse 15? Read, I can read. Okay. I, I can read. What does it say? See, that's what you're, anything that you, you can pick anything out of the, the Bible What's that? together and make it seem what that's what it's supposed to be. But it's supposed to be about love. Okay, so he says the Bible is supposed to be about love, so you can make you can take a verse and twist it and make it mean whatever you want to say. Well, I, I don't know how if you if you took John fourteen and fifteen, this is the verse that Mark was trying to uh, get the gentleman to read. John fourteen fifteen, we'll put it up here. Uh, it says, "If any man, if if you love me, uh, keep my commandments." Now, I, you know you could take that verse and tighten a knot, and it's going to say, "If you love me, keep my commandments." I mean, how 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 much twisting can you do on that verse and get to say something different? I just, I don't know that you can twist that verse uh, any other way, but the gentleman seemed to, you know, not want to read the verse that, uh, that we were talking about loving and the connection between love and the commandments. And so, you know, when people call in, they say, well, you know, y'all not, y'all don't, I don't hear y'all say talk about love. So I decided, well, you know what, we're going to do a whole uh, uh, lesson tonight on love. And this is going to be the most loving lesson that, I, I hope uh, I, I've ever done. I mean, it's going to be love on every, just about every slide we put up here. We're going to see the word love. We're going to talk about love, 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 love. And I want you to realize what we're doing and what we're saying when we're talking about the Bible's, uh, the teaching of love in the Bible. Okay? So we want to ask the question, where's the love? You know, that's, or that's the question that was asked us. Well, let's find the love. You know, you want to know where the love is? Well, let's find the love. You know, I think everybody knows the verse uh, about love. Uh, there's a John uh, 3 and verse 16. I heard Mark allude to it. But I think everybody knows this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this is a verse about love. There's no greater uh, verse on love, I guess, in, in the Bible that is uh, any better known, you might say, than this verse. God so loved the world. But how does love really affect us? How, do we, how does love uh, come into our lives? What do we do with love? I guess what I'm trying to say. How do, you, how do you talk about love? How do you show love? How do you preach love? Well, 
Friends, I think what you need to understand is when the Bible talks about love, it always connects it with the Word of God. Now look at this. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36, Matthew 22, 36, we're going to read this. Here a, a lawyer comes, and, and the Bible says he's asking Jesus a question. He's tempting him. Uh, one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the, the, the two greatest commandments, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself, on those two laws, or those two commandments, hang all the laws and the prophets. In other words, every, everything God said in the law was resting upon the, the idea that it is done out of love for God or love for your fellow man. Now, I believe when most people hear love, they think what that means is overlook, bypass, disregard, turn a blind eye to what everyone's doing and just, you know, give everybody big warm hugs like, you know, I don't know, warm, mushy-gushy, kissy-kissy, lovey-lovey uh, hugs, and that's love. No, friends, that's not love. That's not true love. And so what, what the Bible is telling us about love is often overlooked by people. And then when you start showing, demonstrating true love, they say, well, that's not very loving. Well, I want you to consider this. Jesus said all the commandments, the, the greatest commandment has to do with love for God, and the second one has to do with love for your fellow man. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So my question for you is this then. What do you think of when you read verses like this? Let's look at, at Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus 20, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or the stranger that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Now think about that. Now that is a very bloody command. Yet Jesus said all the commands hang upon a command that says, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, if you don't understand what true love is, then you won't understand how that verse or that command can be loving. But think about it for a moment. How is this, how is this showing love when the command is to kill someone? That's usually what people think about. They, they focus on, well, this is to kill somebody. That can't be loving. You know, we have people today that, well, you know, capital punishment, that, that's wrong. You know, you, you shouldn't kill people. You shouldn't kill people. That's wrong. That's not very loving. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Remember, the commands that God has given rest upon loving God and loving your fellow man. Now, let's think about this. Look what the, what the crime is. Let's look at the crime. Let's look at the, at the sin, the transgression here. God said, whosoever he be of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel that giveth any of his seed unto Molech. So we're talking about offering up your children as sacrifices to a false god. See, here's what the sin is. You talk about, well, it's, it's, a, it's a sin. It would be wrong. It's, not, it's unloving to kill these people. Well, look what they've done. Have they really demonstrated love toward their child? Have they demonstrated love toward their fellow man, their neighbors, by saying, you know what, this child's life is worth more dead 
than alive. All right, this child's worth more dead than alive. And not only that, but think about this. Look who they're offering this child to. Molech. A false god. Now, what were the two greatest commands that we just read? Jesus said, the great commandment is this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Have they demonstrated loving God with their heart, soul, mind, and strength when they offered up their children to a false god? No. You may recall that the, uh, the Ten Commandments, let's just look here at the Ten Commandments for a moment here. God spake, Exodus 20, God spake these words saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Well, they violated that one. Thou shalt not make unto the image graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Well, they violated that one. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Well, there's three right there. Now, can you say that you really love God when you're offering, when you're worshiping, let's just say worshiping, the God of Molech? Yet Jesus said the greatest commandment is love the Lord thy God. And so there's a reason for him saying that. Because when you disobey God, you're striking at the very heart of all that God has said do. That is love him first. So, is it unloving then? Is it unloving then for someone to be put to death for violating a law that God says is unloving? See, is it unloving to punish someone who has demonstrated that they are unloving? And then let's go again. Let's, let's revisit the idea that what they have done here in Leviticus 20 and verse 2, they've offered up their children. Now, is it unloving for someone to put their child to death? You know, you could find uh, example after example after example of individuals who are killing their children. You know, this lady, uh, Smith, I think her name was Smith, down here in, uh, I think she was in North Carolina, several years ago, uh, drove her children off in the, in the ocean, killed them. You read about, you read about countless times individuals are, are you, know, uh, uh, you know, kill their children and kill themselves. They hear voices that tell them to kill their family members. Is that really love for their family? We look at those people and say, well, man, those people aren't loving. They're, they're wacko. Is that, is that really love? Can you say that they are loving? And then do we dare talk about all the people who say, well, I'm going to get an abortion because it's convenient. You know, it's an unwanted blob of tissue. You know, people talk about, I, I should have this, but people talk about uh, what's the What's the princess over there in England, Kate, Katie? Well, she got a little baby bump. Well, is it, is it a baby bump? Is it really a baby bump or is it just a blob of tissue bump? See that? Why, why all of a sudden is it when, when this princess, when she, has, when she is going to have a child or when she is carrying, when she's pregnant, all of a sudden it's a baby bump. But anybody else, it's just a blob of tissue unviable tissue mass bump. Yet people kill their unborn child all the time and we don't blink. And we don't say, well, that's unloving, but it is unloving. And so my point is, see, God knew that every law that he gave was going to be rooted in the principle of you love me and you love your neighbor. And so all the commands that God gave focused upon loving him and loving your neighbor. So when something like this comes along, 
and the people offer their children up, it's not loving. It's not loving toward God. It's not loving toward their children. And it also shows that they don't have any regard for other people's children either. So this is what I think. If, if, a, person, if a person doesn't love their own children, how, I'll start to wonder, why, how would they feel about my children? See that? How do they feel about my children? <clears throat> you know? Well, if I, if, I see, if I see a child that's hurt, my, my heart goes out. I, I, want to, I want to take care of them. I don't want that child to hurt. Why? Because I love my child. And so I love any child that is, that is hurt. But when people kill their own children, well, you know, Paul says that's a lack of natural affection. And I just, I don't see how they can say, well, they love God or they love their fellow man when they don't even love their own offspring. So is it really unloving for God to say these people should be put to death? See that? You actually are showing, or God is demonstrating, that his law is protecting the neighbors of this person. The person who would do this would show disregard for life. And if they'll show disregard for life, the sanctity of life in their own child, then they'll show it toward their fellow man too. And so all of God's laws are centered around love for God and for the fellow man. Think about this. Think about this way. Is it wrong to steal is it, wrong, is it wrong to steal or, or kill? Let's look at this. You know, I think when you talk about the Old Testament, generally you think about you think about the, the Ten Commandments. That's what everybody talks about. But let's look at this. Remember, all the, the laws hang upon these two. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, love, the, love the Lord thy God and love thy neighbor as thyself. But in Romans 13... Romans 13 and verse 8. Let's look at this. Paul says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now how are you going to show you love your fellow man? So that's what I try to get this man to answer. How do you love indeed? And and how do, you lo- how do you love one another? Well, look at this. For this, Paul goes on to say, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this, saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So how am I going to show my love? Well, God gave the commandment. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Here's his commandment. His commandment is don't, uh, uh, don't commit adultery. You know what? If you, love, if you love your neighbor as thyself, you won't steal from him. You won't steal his wife. You won't steal her husband. See that? Yet our society, you know, we say, well, we love God. Oh, do you love God? Yeah, we love God. Well, how, how do you show that? Well, I'm over here shacking up on my best friend's wife. Or I'm over here sleeping with my best friend's husband. Really? That, that's, that's how you show your love for God? Do that? So all the love is demonstrated by keeping his commandments. Let's look again at John, or let's look at John 14 and verse 15. Yeah, look again here. Sorry about that. John 14, 15. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, let's come on down to verse 21 here. Uh, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. 
Now, friends, think about this. You want to say we're not loving, but all we're telling you is the commandments of God. And look what Jesus has done. Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. And, if, and he that keeps my commandments, he it is that loveth me, and he shall be loved of my Father. What, he shall be loved of my Father? I thought God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's right. God loved the world enough to send his only begotten Son, but there is more to God's love than simply sending Jesus to provide a means of salvation for mankind. If you don't obey God, all of God's commands, then you're not benefiting from his love. Look at this. See, God sent his son to the world. That's, his love has reached down and sent his son. But you're missing out more of God's love by failing to continue to obey the commandments of God. Look at this in 1 John 3 and verse 1. Here's more of God's love. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us. Here's a kind of love that God has given only to those who have been obedient to him. That we should be called the sons of God. Not everybody is a son of God. I don't care what the Pope says. The Pope says to the atheist you can get to heaven without believing in God. Well, the Pope's wrong on another point. The Pope's wrong, period. And all he did just make things worse. Now he's doubly wrong. See that? So if you say, well, I love God, well, keep his commandments. Because if you don't keep his commandments, you miss out on his love. So God gave the commandments, don't steal, don't, don't kill. That demonstrates you love your fellow man. Uh, have you ever thought about hate crimes? What's a hate crime? Well, a hate crime is something that is against someone of a particular uh, ethnicity or race. Wrong. Wrong. Look at this. In Romans 13, let's get back to Romans 13. Verse 9. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. Now, if, if loving thy neighbor means you don't do these things, what does it mean if you do these things? Must mean you hate your neighbor because you can't love him, right? The opposite of love is hate. So if you do these things, you really hate your neighbor. So a hate crime is stealing a crime, yeah. Is killing a crime, yeah. Is bearing false witness against your neighbor, is that a crime, yeah. So really when you do these things, you, you hate your neighbor. Therefore I submit to you that every Sin is a hate crime. It's a hate crime against God. It's a hate crime against your fellow man. Because it shows you don't really care about your neighbor. Think about this, folks. When people, when people commit crimes, they show that they don't care about the rest of society. And if you want to give criminals a pass and say, well, you know, let's just turn a blind eye to it. All they stole was a pack of cigarettes or all they stole was a case of beer or whatever. All they stole was some bread. All they stole was some milk, you know. They just did a little vandalism. They just broke into a car. So, you know what, friends? That shows a lack of love for the fellow man. How does that work? So what, what do you mean, James? Well, take this, for instance. When someone goes down here to Walmart and steals, now the crime is stealing, thou shalt not steal. The crime is stealing. But when someone steals from Walmart, you know what? They don't love me. Because they, they don't love me because when they steal, that means the price 
of things that I buy legally, then I put my good money down for it, it goes up. The price of products go up because people steal. Same thing with insurance. People drive around here, they don't have car insurance, they, they run into someone, they wreck. Guess what? If they don't have insurance, now everybody's premiums go up ultimately because why? Well, because someone is cheating the system. Someone's cheating the system. Insurance fraud. You know, these people out here that get, <clears throat> that get uh, 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 unemployment or workers' comp or, or, or whatever it is I'm trying to think of here, disability, and they don't have a legitimate reason to draw it, but yet it's easier. You know what you're doing? You're cheating. You don't really love me. You don't really love my family. You don't really love your neighbor. So when someone says, well, you, 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 don't, you don't say love. Friends, I don't have to say love in order for it to be love. See that? But yet, our, 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 our friend that called in the other day, here's what he says. How do you love indeed? How do you, the Bible says love in word and deed. How do you, how do you love indeed? Do I have to say love? You, you, you love one another no matter how they are. No, I mean, if you love, no, and how, how do you love indeed? In word and deed. Look, in word and deed, I understand that, but you How do you do it? Way. How do you do it? I mean, you, you got to speak it because it, how, No, how do you, how do you love if, indeed? If, if you, you, you call yourself, I mean, I, I'm not saying what you are, but if, if you're a preacher, you should show love to your fellow man, no matter what they are, what they believe. Okay, but I how, mean, do, look, here, here, here it is, First John 3, 18, First John 3, First John 3, 18, my little ch sir. If you call yourself a man of Christ. Okay, sir. All right, I'm going I'm to give you one try. My little children, let us not love in word, that's saying it, neither in tongue, that's saying it, but in deed and in truth. Now, how do you love in deed? Yeah, but, I mean... How do I'm you love in deed? TV, Just tell me. You, you speak in word, ain't you? I am. I mean... I am, but I how, mean, how, how, how do you love in deed, sir? How, how are you supposed to bring sinners in? Sir, if you, if are you going to answer my down. question? Sir, are you, are you going to answer my question? Are you going to answer my question? How do you love question indeed? Of, How do you love indeed? Your again. How do you love indeed? How do you love indeed? Deed. Right here. Can you read this? Love in, in, in deed and in truth. That is in what you do. You love, How do you love in what you, you do? You love from your heart. How do you love in no what you do? You love in your heart. Okay, but, but uh, all right, I mean, all right. Thanks for your call. Thanks for your call. Now, friends, you can't just say what well, you love in your heart. you got to demonstrate it. And that's why, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get people to see that if God has given commands that demonstrate a person's, a person, or a person can demonstrate their love for him and for the fellow man by keeping those commandments, it demonstrates that love it's not just something that you that you say. It's not just something that you uh, you know spew out of your mouth. First John chapter three and verse eighteen. First John three eighteen. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we uh, know that we are of the truth. We shall assure our heart before Him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Look, verse twenty one. Beloved, if our uh, heart condemn us, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, I'm actually um, read, not reading the verse I want to. Whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, let's back up to verse 11 here. Let's back up to verse 11. We're talking about uh, having love in our heart. Well, friends, your love... Uh, is manifested by what you do. Verse 11, 1 John 3, 11. This is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. Now, 
did Cain love his brother? No. How do you know that? Well, he never said, I love you. He just never said, I love you to Abel. That's how I know he didn't love He never said it. Friends, he didn't have to say, I love you. He didn't have to say, I don't love you. He, he showed very clearly he hated him by his actions. He slew him. And wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Now, you just can't, you just can't go around saying, well, the only way to have love is, is to say it. No, the way you have love is you demonstrate it, friends. You demonstrate it. Look at verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you, uh, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth his brother abideth in, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby we uh, perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Where in the Bible did you ever hear God say, I love you? Show me the verse where God says, I love you. Can you find it? I love you. No, but there's countless verses in the Bible that say God loved us because God so loved the world that he sent his son. There was the statement of I love you, not just the words, but the deeds. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he, Christ, laid down his life for us. How do you know God loves you? How do you know God loves all the world? He sent his only begotten son. You know, I asked my daughter, when my daughter was little, my youngest daughter was little, and I'm sure I asked my oldest daughter this too. But I said, Hi, who loves you? I said, you, oh, daddy, daddy loves me. How do you know? And you know what they'd say? When they were young, they'd say, because you tell me. And it's true. I, I, I did tell them that, and I still do. But I said, but how else do you know? And as they got older, they started to realize, Daddy loves me because of what he does. You know, he plays a game with me, or he takes me places, or he, you know, buys things for me, provides food for me, clothing, and, you know, different things. They recognize love is demonstrated, not just, not just words. And so hereby perceive we the love of God because of what he's done for us. And that's why John goes on to say, Whoso hath this world's good and seeth his brother have need and showeth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How can you say you have the love of God if you don't demonstrate to your fellow man? Why? Because God said, here's the greatest commandment, love, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. See, love's not something you say, it's, it's what you do. It's what you do. Um, James tells us, um, here in James, uh, Two and verse. Uh, let's see. Fourteen to fifteen, James two fourteen. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding. Notwithstanding ye gave them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Now just like faith without works is dead, love without works is dead. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 3, look at this, he said, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love. 
So when people say, well, I never hear you say love. Well, friends, I've been saying love all night. And here's ultimately how I'm going to demonstrate love. Love, love is not just saying it. And, uh, I haven't heard you say one thing about love. I mean, uh, sir, want to say what everybody's doing. Do I have to say love? Say one thing about love, sir. Do I have to say love in order to show love? Yes. I no. mean, you need to communicate love because that's what the Bible is about. It's about love of one another. Sir, do I have to say love in order to show love? Yes. Sir, do I have to say love in order to show love? Sir, do I have to say love in order to show love? Yes. Friends, I don't have to say love in order to show love. But if I speak the truth, then I am showing you love. Because love, love is telling people the truth. Look at this, Ephesians 4 and verse 15. Ephesians 4 and verse 15. And I want to get some phone calls, Matt, so I guess you can go put the uh, phone lines up. Ephesians 4.15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into uh, him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, when you see that phrase, speaking the truth in love, what does that mean? Well, I'm not saying, well, you know, you just got to smile when you say it. You know, you, it's, you, it's just how you say it. No, friends, you know what? I can, I can tell you the truth, and it'll still make you mad. I can smile when I say it, and it still make you mad. But here's what speaking the truth in love means. If you back up one verse, look at this. It says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love is speaking the truth out of love for the truth and out of love for honesty, not trying to deceive. You know, there's a lot of people that speak the truth and they don't speak it in love. They, oh, they smile when they say it, you know. You see old Joel Osteen. Oh, he smiles, don't he? He holds up his Bible. And I don't even know if he holds up his Bible anymore. He used to. Get everybody to chant after him. Oh, he smiles. And he, he may say something that's true, but he's not speaking the truth in love. When, um, when Billy Graham says, well, the Bible says God loves you. Well, it does. God so loved the world. When he speaks a part of the truth, is he doing it out of love for you? No. Because he tells people the church of their choice. He tells people, well, you, you can get to heaven without believing in Christ. That's the same thing the Pope says. Friends, do you realize if you're listening to Billy Graham, Billy Graham says the same thing that the Pope says. Now, what does that make y'all? Captist or something? I don't know. Half Baptist, half Catholic? Kind of Captist? I mean, I, I don't know. Is that a new uh, denomination there? You know what? The devil, the devil can tell you the truth. So all the devil doesn't tell the truth. He's the father of lies. That doesn't mean he can't tell some truth. Look at this. In Genesis... Genesis 3, when the serpent beguiled or deceived woman, did he tell her the truth? Look at this. The serpent said, verse 4, ye shall not surely die. Look at this, verse 5. God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened. Did he tell the truth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he told the truth, all right. Your eyes will be opened. Oh, but he deceived her when he did it. And these people that say, well, name it, claim it, you know, send me a send me a hundred dollar seed money and it'll get back to you tenfold. And then they quote, quote a scripture says, well, some gonna bring forth fruit uh, uh, thirty fold, some sixty, some a hundred. Just send it on in. Are they telling you the truth? Well, they're reading from the Bible, which is true, but they're deceiving you with it. And so when Paul says speaking the truth in love. 
He's talking about speaking the truth in love of the truth and in love of people's souls by not deceiving them. Friends, we don't deceive you. We don't trick you. We never beg for money. We never ask you for a single dime. We never sell our DVDs. We never sell our books. We never sell anything. We give it away. Because we're speaking the truth to you in love. In love of your soul. In love of the truth. In love of God. Because we're not going to corrupt his word. So we speak the truth in love. We speak the truth in love. Now let me ask you something, friends. Let me ask you this. Is it loving? Is it loving to rebuke someone? See, that's really where we where we wind up. We wind up people saying, Well, y'all not very loving because y'all always y'all always talking about someone else. Friends, I want you to notice this. In 1 Corinthians 5, 1 Corinthians 5, here's the situation. Paul said it's, it's reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is such as not as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he hath done this deed might be taken away from, from among you. For I verily am absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that had done this deed. Verse 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the, in the day of the Lord Jesus. You know what Paul just told them? Paul told them that this person who is living with his father while fornicating, that a fornicator should not be in their midst. That is, they should withdraw from him. They should withdraw themselves from him. Now, his fellowship with God has already been withdrawn. Now, what they're doing is they're withdrawing company from him to have him to recognize that he is no longer in fellowship with them. They're not jeopardizing their fellowship with God by being in fellowship with him. Now, what's the purpose? Right here. The purpose is for the destruction of the flesh. That is, we're getting the flesh attention so that we can affect the spirit. When I was growing up and I misbehaved, my mom made me go get a switch. And you better believe, you better believe, she destroyed the flesh. Boy, she tore my legs up with a switch. You know what it did? It got my spirit's attention. I acted right. And that's what discipline does. Church discipline, the withdrawing of company from someone, sends a message to their spirit. Hey, I better straighten up. Now, you know what Paul calls that? Paul calls that punishment. How do you know that, James? Well, look, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 6. Look what Paul says. Paul says, sufficient to such a man, this man is living with his uh, father's wife, this fornicator, sufficient to such a man is this punishment which was inflicted of many, so that contrary wise ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with over much sorrow. Now watch this. Listen carefully for this word. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. You mean rebuking and chastising someone is actually connected with love? That's exactly right. My friends, we've already demonstrated that love is demonstrated by what you do as well as what you say. And if you tell someone the truth, you love them. Who likes to be corrected? Nobody. Nobody. But if you love the truth, you'll receive the correction. And if you love the truth, you will correct someone. You'll point out what's wrong. You'll point out the errors. And so when we're, when we're pointing out these guys that are teaching false doctrine, you know what we're doing? We're correcting. We're showing our love 
not only for their soul because they're teaching error, but we're also showing love for you who listen to them. All y'all do is put down Billy Graham. You know what? I love Billy Graham's soul. I love your soul. I don't think Billy Graham's going to change, but you know what? If I can help you see it, see, I love the truth. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of folks that want to say, well, you just love somebody and you just let them go. Well, you can, t you can holler, I love you, as they drop off into hell. And that's not going to be love. And they're going to know pretty soon, you know what? They, they, they really don't love me. But I can assure you this. There's going to be a lot of people in Rockingham County and Henry County and, Patrick, and Pennsylvania County in the surrounding areas that, that hear the sound of our voice that are going to stand before God on the judgment day and they're going to say, you know what, and one thing about it, those folks in the church of Christ loved us enough to tell us the truth. We just didn't love the truth enough to obey it. Correcting people is, is love. Correcting people is love. It shows our love for them. You know what shows a lack of love? Lack of love is not hypocritical. Our love is not hypocritical. You know, when people like this guy, got just a few minutes here, when people like this man call in and make these statements. You're on live. Yes, uh, I've sitting here and I've, I've listened to your conversation and uh, what you're preaching, but it seems like to me you're preaching more division than love. The Bible's supposed to be about love. All right, now let me ask you this. When people call in and tell us that we're unloving, and they call in and tell us that we're not supposed to be preaching the way we preach, or we're not supposed to be teaching the way we teach, do they love us? Are they showing us love when they say we should not teach as we do? Well, you know what that is, friends? If that is the case, they're hypocrites. And love is not hypocritical. Look at this. In Romans 12, Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. You know what dissimulation is? That's hypocrisy. Love should not be hypocritical. That is, love shouldn't say one thing and do another thing. Here's a good example of this. In Galatians chapter 2, Galatians 2, verse 11. Remember that word dissimulation. When Peter was come to Antioch, Paul says, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before certain came from James, he did eat with Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself from them, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Verse 14. Or verse 13. And other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas was carried away with their dissimulation. Now Paul said in Romans 12, 9, let love be without dissimulation. But what Peter and these, and these folks were doing was with dissimulation, obviously, because Barnabas was carried away with it. It was hypocrisy. Peter was eating with the, Gentile, the Gentiles, but when Jews came, he separated and said, I can't eat with the Gentiles. He's hypocrite. He was a hypocrite. Well, did he love the Jews? No. I mean, did he love the Gentiles? No, he didn't. Because his love was with hypocrisy. And so when someone says, well, y'all shouldn't be putting these people down. Y'all shouldn't be correcting these people. It just seems mean. Well, it may seem mean to you, but you know what? I would say that when Achan stole that Babylonian garment and that gold and silver from, from uh, Jericho, I can imagine that he'd probably was saying the same thing. You know, they, we're going to stone you, Achan. Oh, that seems so unloving. Friends, it's not unloving. If you really loved God, you'd obey him. If you really loved God, you wouldn't be on the side of error. If you really loved God, you'd obey the truth when it's presented to you. So, friends, when, we, when you hear us preaching, you hear us teaching, you see us on TV, and 
You say, well, my, those folks are always so mean. No, we're not mean friends. We love the truth enough to try to tell you. You know, Charles called me this morning on TV. He, he was on TV in, in Martinsville. I didn't have any idea that he was doing a live show. He called me on TV and he said, and then later he, he tried to call Johnny and got a hold of him. But he told Johnny, he told me both. He said, one thing about it, he said, folks in the Church of Christ, you can always depend on them to give you an answer. You know why, friends? Because we love the truth. One of my Charles doesn't call some of these Baptist preachers up. I might have to ask him that. You know what? They don't love the truth enough to answer the phone. They don't love the truth enough to give you an answer. But we do, friends. We love the truth enough to show you the truth. It may seem mean to you. It may seem cruel to you. But truth always seems cruel and mean to those who are not doing the truth. Friends, we love you, and that's why we're, we do this. You know, we, we bring these programs. We never ask you for a dime. We never ask you for money. Don't have a bag of thons on like the Church of God up in Ridgeway used to have. I don't know if they still do that or not. We don't have a bag of thons. We don't ask you to provide for what we're doing. Why? Because we love you. We love you. And we love you so much that we're willing to do this at whatever it takes to get the truth to you. And I hope you see that. I hope you can see that our love is, is genuine and it's true. So when someone says, well, you know, where's the love? Well, the love is in our speech. It's in our giving you the gospel. And we hope that you'll show God the same love by being obedient to him. You know, the gospel is clear. A person must believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God, and must repent of their sins, confess Christ before man, and be baptized for the remission of sins. Show God your love by being obedient to him. If you love me, keep my commandments, he says. And then Jesus said again in John 14, 21 and following, if you keep his commandments, not only do you show you love Christ, you love God, but then God will love you. Friends, what a great way to start off the new year than to say, I'm going to show God my love and I'm going to be obedient to him. If we can assist you, we're going to put our, here's our contact information again, a word from the Lord at gmail.com. My phone number is 276-340-2653. Call me. We'll have a Bible study. You can email me. We'll have a Bible study. Anything we can do for you to help you, we'll, we'll show our love. We'll show you our love. We'll demonstrate our love by being a minister and a servant to you. If we can assist you, we want to do that very thing. Till next time, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You can always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership.